Hi folks, in this video we're going to cover the last three of the connective tissues that are common and we're going to start with compact bone. And with this, the, the important thing to know is how it's built, really. Um, and it's going to start with blood vessels, um, shown in red and blue for arteries and veins, plus a little gray thing representing a neuron. Um, and what's going to happen during early development when you're an embryo is from the blood vessels, some cells are going to sort of migrate out. These cells are called osteoblasts, and they, just like in all the other connective tissues, just like fibroblasts, are going to make a matrix of collagen. And here's that collagen matrix. Now what's going to be a little bit different compared to the other connective tissues is this collagen matrix is going to be hardened by the addition of calcium, phosphate, magnesium, salts. So these are minerals, you know, when, when you think about vitamins and minerals, these are the minerals that we're talking about. And so this, this is going to be a really hard matrix. And in fact, it's going to be so dense that these cells, again, called osteoblasts, get stuck. They can't even leave. And what eventually happens is more of these osteoblasts leave the blood vessels and set up another sort of ring. And you'll see these coming out in a second. They set up another ring of the cells and they're going to do what the other ones did too. So these osteoblasts, which eventually call, get called osteocytes, as you can see in the label, um, make another ring of matrix um, over and over again until all the space is basically taken up um, all the way around the blood vessel. Now, there are a bunch of vocab terms and then some key things to know about how this, uh, this tissue works. One thing to keep in mind about this tissue is all these cells, these, these cells now called osteocytes, and again, I don't really care if you use the word osteocyte or osteoblast. Um, they're effectively interchangeable for this class. Um, they are connected to the blood vessels in the center. So these little openings that they're stuck in for the rest of their lives are called lacunae. Um, and there are these tiny canals or canaliculi that connect them to the open area in the center with the blood vessels. And while there's some vocab here, lacuna, canaliculi, central canal, the, the really important thing is to realize that all of these bone cells, osteocytes, still have access to nutrition, still have access to oxygen, etc. And so they are alive. And if you break bone, this stuff heals remarkably quickly. You know, I broke my wrist a couple times and that, you know, it was four weeks and it had most of the density back. So where is this type of bone? So compact bone is in what is called cortical bone, which is the sort of really dense outer sort of bone of um, any of the bones of your body. There are other types of bone and other types of tissue in the organs that we call bones. Like the thing I've drawn here is a femur, um, which is your thigh bone. Um, but you know, there is also um, other types of bone, but the compact bone is the really strong, dense, um, inflexible one, right? The one that's not very flexible. Spongy bone is also found, and so is hyaline cartilage and other tissues, which we'll talk about when we get to the bone unit. But again, the key thing with compact bone, incredibly dense, high strength, not very flexible, and it can heal because the osteocytes um, do have access to nutrition. Next up is hyaline cartilage. And this is actually be similar. Um, in, in fact, when you build your skeleton, your skeleton actually begins primarily as hyaline cartilage, and then bone replaces it. But we're going to start with these cells here. Um, and these cells, not fibroblasts, not osteoblasts, these are going to be called chondroblasts. But the basic idea is the same every single time. These cells are going to make a matrix of protein. That protein is almost always the same. It is collagen. But what makes one tissue different from the next is what might else you add? What else might you add to that collagen? And in this case, uh, instead of adding sort of hard minerals, um, we're going to add in another material called chondroitin. So collagen plus chondroitin leaves this, uh, it, it almost looks plastic or like stained glass on a microscope. Um, this makes a pretty hard but mildly flexible um, sort of matrix. These cells, again, chondrocytes, make collagen chondroitin matrix. Um, and this is not the elastic, this is not the elastic type of cartilage that you find in your ears. Um, this is the strong stuff. 
the strongest, least flexible of the cartilages. Um, this is the stuff that's at your joint surfaces. Um, when it gets worn down, that's what causes osteoarthritis. Uh, this is the stuff if you feel like the, the plates in your nose. Um, this is what also attaches your ribs to your sternum um, at your breastbone. Um, and so there are two other types of cartilage, which you don't have to know immediately. Um, one has more collagen, and these are sort of the discs between your vertebrae, um, and one of them has more elastin, and that's, say, the stuff in your ears, for example. Okay. But those are the la that's the last of the structural um, connective tissues. Now, the last thing that we call a connective tissue is blood, and, and blood's a little un pretty odd um, as a connective tissue because it doesn't have fibroblasts making a matrix or any cell type making a sub fibrous matrix. Instead, you have a fluid matrix, and we call this matrix plasma. It does have proteins in it. You don't see them because they're not, you know, big, long fibers. Um, there are proteins in there, though, um, and they can become fibrous if you, say, need a blood clot, um, if you need to, say, heal a, a wound. So um, there are proteins available in here, but you don't see them under a microscope. Now, the most of the cells that are found in the blood are gonna be red blood cells, technically called erythrocytes, which means red cell in Greek. Um, and their job is to transport oxygen and also CO2 to a lesser extent. The last of the cell types um, is, uh, are the white blood cells. And there are lots of different types of white blood cells found in blood. Uh, you don't have to know the different versions of them yet. Um, but the white blood cells are there to provide immune system activity. So they're going to find infections and fight them. Um, please do remember, though, that most of the white blood cells, or leukocytes as we know them, um, are actually primarily found in reticular tissues in places like your lymph nodes. That's it for the connective tissues. Um, best of luck studying. Bye.